It's time to go beyond the headlines Cause I don't put in overtime just so I can headline Okay, now it's Fox Sports, I'm live with Renee Going hard every day, sports rapping every play Different segments for your favorites Coming at you daily with positive vibes Yeah, we some game changers Basketball, football, soccer With different interviews, you never know who may pop up Listen, <laughs> only on beyond the headlines This is beyond the headlines <laughs> Only on beyond the headlines, this is beyond the headlines. <laughs> Only on beyond the headlines, this is beyond the headlines. With Renee Washington. No problem, no problem at all. So unfortunately, you're not at the actual Super Bowl 52 because you are you were not working that game, but you were fortunate to be able to work the Eagles games leading up to the Super Bowl as well as Absolutely. the parade. <laughs> such a, such an amazing feeling, unforgettable feeling, should I say? So take us through that. I mean, being on the sidelines, of course you're working, but you're also watching as a a Philly officer. I'm sure you're, or I'm hoping you're an Eagles fan. Actually, I don't want to assume. Oh yeah, big time Eagles <laughs> fan. Um, it was like surreal to be honest with you. I was at the um the last home game. We had home field advantage throughout the playoffs. So the last home game, I actually worked, which was that Minnesota game, and. We destroyed them. It was just such an amazing feeling. The sad thing about that game is it was like I didn't realize once the game was over that the Eagles fans were just cutting up and just being really, like, hostile and negative towards the Minnesota fans. So it was like a whole policy that changed, and it was just all kind of, you know, stuff that changed in terms of us, you know, working the detail because of the unruly crowds. But the feeling was it was just like surreal, like being in that building, like every time the Eagles scored, it was like, like, uh, like lightning and thunder was going off. It was, hmm. and my heart was pounding. It was a good feel. It was a great feeling. And that was, that was the playoff game. That wasn't even the Super Bowl. Right. Right. It is a shame that unfortunately us Eagles fans and Philly sports fans in general have a very bad rep of being the worst sports fans, which I don't think <laughs> we are, but okay, whatever. No. Um, but We're just also- passionate. Yeah, we're passionate. That's it. We're we're all we're all athletes, former athletes, coaches, whatever. We're all very passionate people. But you mm-hmm. also had a chance to make your TV debut. I saw the clip of you. Oh um, my god! One of the Eagles. I guess it was you were you remember you were there. I was not there. Actually, yeah, one of the um. <laughs> actually, I was like like on, near the sidelines, and uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, I don't know what player it was. It was one of the players from the Vikings. He was a monster, big dude, and he just like you know he caught a pass. And I was just like, oh, my God, like, don't run me over. It wasn't like I was that close, but I was close enough. And it was just like, oh, man. And it was like I was receiving all these calls and texts. And they're like, oh, I just seen you on TV. And they just started messing with me. And the crazy thing is my uniform was like, because I'm known for keeping my, like, my appearances, like, everything. So I'm known for, like, keeping my, my uniform straight. And I think my something was, like, crooked on my uniform. And they were, like, people were quick to point that out to me. You know, oh, they were like, goodness. oh. Oh um, my! Yeah, it was it was, it was crazy, but it, it was it was intense. It was intense, and I felt like an ant because you know people don't realize when you see these players on TV, you may say, "Oh, this is a big guy, and they don't look that big," or whatever. And you see these people when you see these players in person, they are like they're like like Goliath. They're they're just mm-hmm. like some big 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 people. Yeah, they are, especially once you mm-hmm. add pads and everything else. It is it's, um, it's quite interesting to see how the tv makes everything look smaller or everyone looks oh smaller. absolutely yeah yeah even being there in person even, is something else oh it, it is something else i mean it's just it's just a, it's a it's a good feeling especially when when your team when you're when you're there with your team you know and you're around a bunch of people that are cheering and rooting for the same thing that you're rooting for mm-hmm. and it's difficult i'm not gonna lie because as a police officer, you have to be professional. So you can't be like, you know, yelling and screaming and high fiving while the, you know, while the game is going on. And that right, takes me like, back to, <laughs> yeah, like this when the Super Bowl, like when it's so, when the Super Bowl was played, we were like, I had to work because, you know, the sad thing is, you know, um, like whenever any team, you know, Philadelphia is in the championship, we're on standby in case, you know, people want to riot or whatever. So that night, the night of the Super Bowl, you know, we were working and, you know, there was like, you know, a small TV near us, mind you. you we're talking like throwback, like a, a, a portable, tiny, small TV and maybe like 30 to 50, 
officers all in one area, saturated, watching one small TV. And when we won that, like, cops had to contain themselves. They were, like, high-fiving and yelling and screaming. And we were all amongst each other. We weren't, like, out in the public anywhere. We were just, like, secreted. But yet, everyone was, like, it was just hard. Like, people were just so emotional. People were crying. It was just... It's just the feeling you, you, you never forget. Like when certain things happen in life, you remember what you were doing, you know, what time it was, what day it was. You just remember everything. And that was just like, oh, my goodness. It was like it was it was just surreal. Like it was just such an amazing feeling. Yeah, you know? I definitely remember as soon as they won, driving into the city and just being a part of all mm-hmm. the chaos going on down in Philly as people were mm-hmm. just running around screaming. And so I'm sure and, you had to meet at least oh my goodness. To work mode. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like you forget, like you forget that it's 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 winter time because people are outside, you know, shirts on, shirts off, you know, they're just just lighting firecrackers and and yet we have to police them. So we're like, you know, like you're not trying to like be stern and and like you're not trying to be too too harsh towards people to, because they, they want to celebrate. So if they're right. yelling and screaming and lighting firecrackers, you don't want to go and lock them up. You know what I'm saying? So you, to a certain extent, you have to show some sort of compassion, but it's difficult because people are just like, oh my goodness, like we're so passionate about mm-hmm. football. Yeah. You know? I don't want to rain on their parade because you were No, we parade. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely like Awful it was cheesy line but you were part of the parade <laughs> also working that oh, yeah. as well. so you got to experience all of this excitement from a it, different angle um, i'm sure you were on the inside going every the angle yes yeah and and working the parade i mean it, there were people that there were just people coming from any and every direction in terms of fans to come and to support um it was it was such an amazing feeling to see to see the progress you know to see what we've been missing because you have a lot of people that like you know don't remember you know a Super Bowl or us reaching a Super Bowl or having um uh you know the the parade so to actually to be a part of that to work that and to see so many people and saturate the city but yet nothing negative going on no violence like it was just a good feeling um the coaches were happy the players were happy um they were the players were pumped up i mean they were just so excited and the players like there were there were so many different like buses coming down broad street and like mind you the players they were like at every major intersection so at a major intersection that's where you'll get like a very large crowd and the players and coaches they would stop at the intersection and they'll just get off and and the players would jump off the bus and they would high five people shake hands take pictures like it was just so real. It was just wow. Like it was like something you just don't forget. You, you never forget. And everybody's just happy. You know, everyone's just really mm-hmm. happy and excited. Yeah. You know, we we need that. We need that again. You know, twenty 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 one. We need that again. We need that feeling twenty twenty one again. It, yeah, it's it's gonna happen. I'm feeling it too. You know, we took this year wasn't to. great. Last year wasn't great. Injuries and all, but we're ready to bounce back. Oh yeah, we're we're ready. (laughs) We have we have no choice. (laughs) Yes, and I am calling it today as of January 2020 that the Eagles had a rough season last year. We know, so they will definitely be back stronger next season. If not in the Super Bowl, at least making a farther run into the playoffs. But we'll definitely be in the Super Bowl, given 2021, 2022, maybe 2023 at the latest. Yes, I'm saying it now. That's how much confidence I have in my birds. But, um, Mike, I know we talk, we've talk. we been talking about an experience to never forget, being a part of the Eagles' run through the NFC to Super Bowl 52 and the parade in 2018. But let's get into another topic, um, something else that happened to you. This past August, at just the age of 36, a healthy cop that works out regularly, you suffer a stroke. Can you take us through exactly what happened? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's a day I would never forget. Um... August 29th of 2019, I suffered a stroke at the age of 36. Currently, I'm 37. It was scary. Um, So what happened was, like, early on during the day, I was experiencing terrible neck pain, very bad neck pain. And I was at work. So that day, um, so it was 
I guess, I don't know, it was August, 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 probably August 28th, I was experiencing that neck pain. Yeah, August 28th, I was experiencing that neck pain. So I decided to go to the doctor, orthopedic doctor, because I never experienced pain like that before. So I went to the doctor, and when I went to the doctor, after the, uh, the doctor prescribed me some muscle relaxers and pain medication. But after that, I decided to go to a chiropractor to get my neck cracked because of the neck pain. I still experienced it. So I went to the chiropractor and they cracked my neck and they put like this, some warm, like some, some sort of device on my neck. And I felt a little better actually. So I came home that day. I took my, um, my pain pills and my muscle relaxers and I decided to take a nap. So I took a nap. And after I woke up from my nap, my nap, the room was completely upside down. And I'm like, something's not right. It was a feeling that I never experienced before. So the ceiling was on the floor. The floor was on the ceiling. And I couldn't, like, I was able to walk, but I couldn't, like, like I had to hold on to something. Like, if I, I couldn't walk straight, like, if I were to walk, it would be like a zigzag or I would have to crawl. So I'm like, okay, something is not right. So me... You know, being young, in shape, healthy, I'm like, oh, you know what it is? I'll just sleep it off. So, Mm -hmm. you know, after that, I just decided to go back to sleep, and I slept it off. And I woke up again the very next day, which was August 29th, and I felt the same way. And I'm like, oh, something's not right, because I never felt like this. And, you know, being a man, you know, us men, we don't like going to the hospitals. We don't like going to doctors. We don't like going to emergency rooms. I went to the emergency room. So I went to the emergency room. Well, I'm sorry. Let me backtrack. I went to the doctor and the doctor said, yo, you need to go to the emergency room because there was nothing he can do for me. You drove so to I doctor. went to, I had somebody to drive me. I okay. cannot drive. There was, yeah, there was no way I can drive. I was going to say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I can Keep drive. No, that, absolutely. Um, so um, someone took me to the the emergency, I mean, I'm sorry, not the emergency room, took me to the doctor. And then from the doctor, he said, yo, you need to go to the emergency room. I went to the emergency room. And of course they performed a million tests. And by this time I'm in the emergency room and I'm like out of it. I'm like on cloud nine. I don't even know what, I barely know what's going on. Like I'm in and out of sleep. So they done a CAT scan and an MRI, which revealed that I suffered a stroke. And I was like wow. completely shocked. Like, yeah, you got to be kidding me. Like, like me? Why me? So that's that's like where my journey begins. Like it's, you know, it was it was just life changing, should I say? And that's that's very su- su- uh, surprising to me because, well, again, I don't know, I don't know anybody personally that has suffered a stroke, but to me, the signs are like mm-hmm. numbness in in a part of your body. Mm-hmm. You know, trouble speaking, dizziness, but you had these symptoms. The fact that you slept, you know, so you don't even know exactly what moment you were having the stroke. I'm not even sure if it was like a, a quick mm-hmm. thing or like while you were sleeping. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure, but I would have never guessed that those symptoms would have been a stroke. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely it's, not. No. It's crazy. It's scary. It's scary, too. Yes. So what well, was what? What did the doctors tell you? What what happened? I mean, did they were there any uh, was there any rhino well, reason or cause so, how it happened? Yeah. So pretty much, like it's especially like when you're like when you're you're young and you're healthy, they're like they're constantly running tests. So it is, I didn't find out immediately. Like they didn't know because they ran every test you can imagine. So probably about a I would say maybe a month or so after I had my stroke. I had to get what's called a TA, and that stands for transesophageal echocardio cardiography. So what that is is they put a a scope. They have to put you to sleep, and they put a scope down your throat to look at your heart. So they did. I had to get that that done. And once I got that done, the doctor was like, "Uh, you have a hole in your heart." So I'm like, "You got to be kidding me!" Like, yeah. So when they found out that I had a hole in my heart. Um, what happened was a blood clot leaked out from my heart and got into my brain, which caused my stroke. Mm. So I had to, I'm like, oh, what the heck? So they were like, you know, you have options. You can get the, the hole in your heart closed or you can leave it. So I'm like, no, I, I want to get this closed. 
So I had to get another procedure done. They call it, I think, a PFO closure. So I, I forget the exact term for it, but it's called a PFO closure, a short term. And they pretty much close up that hole in your heart. So I got that done December the 11th. Okay. And I'm just, yeah, so I, I got that done. And so now I'm like, I'm just working to get back to where I was. Um, it's, it's scary, to be honest with you. Like, I'm, I'm not the same um, physically. Like, I was in shape. Like, I was working out. You're talking five days a week. Mm. Um, and then all of a sudden, I didn't work out. Right. You know, I couldn't work out. Um, and now, you know, I just got the okay to like two and a half weeks ago this is actually my third week to start working back out so i've been back in the gym back five days a week um i'm down 17 pounds like i you know i had some muscles so now i'm like oh, like where I'm, I'm looking in the mirror i'm like where all my muscles go right. so now i'm back in the gym um i'm actually i'm eating a lot more healthy now to be honest okay. with you um because bef before you know you name it i eat it so now it's like you know what let me just take a step back just to make sure that I don't eat something that I'm not supposed to eat. Because when I went to the doctor, they also said, and a lot of us men, you know, probably women as well, um, which we don't know, we probably suffer from high cholesterol. So they said my cholesterol was on the high side. So um, like my cholesterol, they told me it was at 140. So they said with a stroke patient, it should be at 70. So the last time I had a check, it was at 140. So I need to be down to 70, not knowing, you know, my cholesterol was the way that it, it was. So now I'm working on, you know, my diet and I'm working, you know, on my body itself. And it's just mentally, to be honest with you, like having a stroke mentally, it's a challenge. It's, it's different the way you think, the way you, you, you act because a stroke attacks your mind. So it really, it's just, it's life changing to be honest wow. with you. It's, so what have you yeah. and I'm so sorry that you have dealt with all this. This is, this is insane, but what have the doctors told you since then you talked about finding about out about the hole in your heart and how that triggered it. Was there anything else that they attributed the stroke to or anything, you know, that they gave you any feedback on or information on to help you, figure out why this happened to you and how you can avoid it happening again? Yeah, I mean, pr pretty much they, I mean, because they didn't know at the time. So um, what can cause a stroke? I mean, there's several causes, alcohol, I don't drink, smoking, I don't smoke, stressed, I'm not stressed. Um, so there are like several causes. So, you know, none of those factors contributed to me because I don't do any of those things. Right. Um, but to be honest with you, I think the most important thing is just to make sure you, you, you take care of yourself and more importantly, go to the doctor and get checked up because if you don't go and get yourself checked out, you just never know. Like for me, when you looked at me on the, from the outside, you'll say, oh, he looks good. He looks perfect. He's in nice shape. But internally, you don't know what's going on. So I say that to say, you know, anyone who's listening, you know, young, middle aged or old, just go to the doctor and get yourself checked out. So that way, you know, what's going on, not only outside, but inside your body as well. Wow. Have you have you been working since then? I mean, something that I really liked about looking and, and hearing about your story is that it's very unique. So have you been working in oh. any awareness, advocacy, oh, stroke oh. survivor, you know, <laughs> are you going to become a oh, well, motivational <laughs> speaker or something behind this? I, I, <laughs> you know, I hope, I mean, <laughs> like, um, honestly, I put God first, to be honest with yes. you, like, to, and they say to fully recover from a stroke is six months to a year to like, I'm not even going to say necessarily fully recover, but to recover better. Um, the crazy thing is, so once I had my stroke, within two months, I was back to work, full duty, no restrictions, like still oh, doing my wow. job. And then, yeah, which is crazy. And then I had to go back out again to get the procedure done on my heart to get that closed, December the 11th. And I came back, uh, I think like that, I'm, I don't know what date it was, but that first Monday in January, I came back to work, full duty, you know, no restrictions. And and mind you, I'm I'm constantly always at the doctors. Like this month, January, I've had two appointments, so two doctor's appointments, and then I have two more doctor's appointments. So I'm always at the doctors. But um, I'm blessed to be honest with you. Um, I'm back at work, and I'm happy to be honest with you. 
but it's a it's it's a progress it's a progress. It still hasn't it hasn't even been six months yet. So right. and I'm doing well. I, I'm doing well. But it's to a certain extent it's like some like weird, like all these weird things are happening. Like prime example, on last Friday I and I don't know how I busted a blood vessel in my eye. And then there that has never happened to me before. So right now my right eye it's really red, like it is, it's scary looking. And I don't know how it happened. I mean, they say it can be from like coughing, sneezing, laughing too hard, lifting weights, et cetera. But uh, I don't know how it happened, but I busted a blood vessel in my eye. And before I would have just said, you know what, I'm gonna just wait until it goes away. But because of my condition, I went to the, I think, obstetrician, the eye doctor, and he told me pretty much like, you know, you bust a blood vessel, it has to go in its own. It, takes, it typically takes around like two weeks to go away. There's no medication we can give you. So, you know, you know, if I get a paper set, I'm going to the doctor. But all the like little weird things are like happening now. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just looking, you know, I'm, I'm being more optimistic and I'm just, you know, looking at the positive thing because there are people that suffer strokes and, you know, they can't walk, they can't talk. And I'm just like, you know, here I am, I'm able to, to do my job and do it to the best of my ability with no, with, you know, full duty, no restrictions, you know? So I'm, I'm blessed to be honest with you. Wow. I'm blessed. I'm excited. You really are. You really are. And honestly, from the outside looking in, you would never expect all this is going on, which is what makes mm -hmm. it, you know, as you mentioned, there are people that are stroke survivors and you can, you can see, they had something going on, going on with their health, you know, and you're, you're kind Absolutely. of breaking all the rules and stereotypes from how you suffered your stroke into even how you're responding, talking about getting back to work fully two oh, months after that's incredible. Definitely. So I oh, thank you so much for sharing your story. You are, you are one of a kind and I wish you nothing but the best moving forward. Where can our listeners follow you in your journey? Even if they want to reach out and get some more information on, you know, your experience and what you dealt with. I mean, I'm, I, I did create an Instagram page. I don't, Welcome to Instagram. Even, <laughs> I don't, I don't even know it to be honest with you, but on, um, on Facebook, my name is Mike Long, M-I-K-E-L-O-N-G. My profile picture is me in, in uniform, Mike Long. I don't even know my, um, my Instagram, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, just be me, be with me on this journey. I don't post much, but I always try to post something positive and, and just know that I'm moving forward and I'm striving to get stronger and get better, you know, to be a better person and just to get my health better and to treat people good. Absolutely. And that's all you can do at this point is learn from it, try to be a better person from it and do your best to keep it from happening again. Definitely. So, oh, all the best. Tomorrow's you. never you're promised. Sure you're, you're doing some incredible things. Absolutely. Tomorrow's never promised. So, you know, make the best of it today. And I'm making the best of it today words to live by absolutely thank you so much for joining our positive vibes only segment this week here on beyond the headlines with renee washington you are an inspiration and i hope that you really understand the magnitude of you know your experience and how much you can impact others with it too because it's a great story to tell it's unfortunate that it happened but here you are able to tell it and to show that you are overcoming this adversity and this challenge in a, in a great way so thank you so much for absolutely. joining us to share your story Absolutely. You're very welcome. And also to, um, if, you know, if anyone is going through the same, uh, going through the same situation and circumstances, you know, feel free to reach out to me on Facebook and shoot me a message. And if I don't get back with you, I'll get back with right away with you. Just, you know, if you have any questions or you're experiencing the same thing, if, if you need any help, feel free to reach out to me and I'll try my best to make sure that I can help you along with your journey as well as mine. Awesome. Awesome.